Good evening. Welcome to South Asia News Line. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here's the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 25th of July. Death toll mounts to 75 in floods in India's Assam. Pakistani Prime Minister returns home exulting after US visit. And at least 12 killed in three bomb attacks in Afghan capital. And now for all the details. The death toll due to floods triggered by incessant rains in India's Bihar and Assam rose to 194 on Wednesday. Flood waters have inundated 20 to 33 districts in Assam province, affecting more than 3 million people. The death toll in India's northeastern Assam province rose to 75 on Wednesday as floods continued to wreak havoc in several parts of the province, disaster management authorities said. A large-scale flood relief operation by the army troops is underway in flood-hit areas of Lower Assam since June 11 after the torrential rains hit the region. The intensified downpour has triggered deluge in all districts of the region, disrupting normal life. Flood waters have inundated 20 of the 33 districts, affecting more than 3 million people. Around 3,000 villages remain inundated. Meanwhile, in eastern Bihar province, 17 people were killed on Wednesday, taking the number of deaths to 123. Heavy rains over the past few weeks have wreaked havoc and affected life in several districts. Millions of people continue to reel under the deluge. District administration of Muzaffarpur has issued an advisory asking people to stay inside their houses amid heavy rainfall predictions by the weather department on Thursday. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan arrived in Islamabad on Thursday upon completion of his three-day visit to the United States where he held talks with President Donald Trump. Cricketer and politician Khan said that it seemed to him as if he was returning to the country after winning the World Cup. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday said that it seemed to him as if he was returning to the country after winning the World Cup. Khan arrived in Islamabad upon completion of his three-day tour to the United States. He expressed his resolve to rebuild the institutions damaged by the former rulers through their corrupt practices. Khan said that he never bowed down to anyone, countering allegations by the opposition party of begging abroad in the middle of a financial crunch. Imran Khan was on a three-day visit to Washington, where he held talks with U.S. President Donald Trump, interacted with congressional leaders and addressed a think tank. In a startling revelation, he said that there were 40 different terror groups operating in his country and successive governments in Pakistan did not tell the truth to the U.S. He admitted that his country still has about 30,000 to 40,000 militants. Moving on, despite generation of more than 1,500 megawatt of energy produced through Neelam Chelam Hydropower Project, People in Pakistan administered Kashmir continue to reel under darkness. They blame the power supplies transferred across Pakistan, leaving the illegally occupied region high and dry. Neelam Jhelum Hydropower Project was deemed as a single solution to all needs and problems of people in Pakistan administered Kashmir when it was inaugurated. The locals were told that the region would get a surplus power supply and water will never be an issue. But the lives of people have turned into a nightmare as they continue to endure load shedding of over 10 hours daily and suffer a severe water shortage. Locals blame most of the 1500 megawatt of energy produced from this project is transferred to provinces of Pakistan, leaving the illegally occupied region high and dry. Or what is the کہ اس اس مظفرآباد شہر کے مضافات اور ان کے علاقوں کے لوگوں نے قربانیاں دی اور سب سے بڑی جن لوگوں کا نقصان ہوا جہاں سے ٹرنل گزری وہ دیہات 
पानी के चश्मों से वो बिल्कुल खाली हो गए वहाँ पानी नहीं रहा और उसके बावजूद यहाँ आज की जो लोड शेडिंग है दारखिलाफा मुजफ्फराबाद जो बेस कैंप का दारकूमत है वो दस घंटे पॉलिटिकल एक्टिविस्ट से इट इज़ अ वेल ऑर्केस्ट्रेटेड डिजाइन टू कीप द पीपल ऑफ द इलीगली ऑक्यूपाइड रीजन सप्रेस्ड दे से दैट द इनकमेंट प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड द प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्ट्रेट कश्मीर हैव नॉट डिमांडेड एनी थिंग फॉर द डेवलपमेंट फ्राम इस्लामाबाद विच ट्रूली कंट्रोल्स द अफेयर्स ऑफ द रीजन इन इज फ्राम अफगानिस्तान एट लीस्ट ट्वेल्व पीपल वर किल्ड एंड सेवरल वोडेड अप थ्री बॉम्ब्स रॉक अफ खान कैपिटल ऑन थर्सडे This came as the chairman of the US Joint Chiefs of Staff was meeting top US and NATO officials in the city. Three bombs rocked Afghan capital Kabul on Thursday with one hitting a bus carrying government employees killing a total of at least 12 people officials said. Five employees of the Ministry of Mines and Petroleum were killed and 10 wounded in the bus attack. According to officials, seven people were killed and more than 20 wounded in the second explosion. The dead and the wounded were transported to the Wazir Muhammad Akbar Khan National Hospital. The Taliban claimed responsibility for only the third blast, which was a car bombing near an industrial park in Kabul. Local media reports said. Two houses in Tehori, one of them is a house in Nazdik. The other one is a house in Nazdik. The other one is a house in Nazdik. The other one is a house in Nazdik. مجموعاً در حدود دوازده سیزده زخمی آمده و چهار مایت که مایت ها قبل از اینکه در شفاخانه برسه فوت کرده بودند وایلنس ان افغانستان هز کانتینیوت امید یو ایس افرتس تو نگوشیت ا دیل دیت وود سی فورن فورسز تروپ ویڈروول ان ریٹرن فور ا پلیج بائی تالیبان دیت دا کانٹری ویل نوٹ اگین بیکم ا سیف ہیون فور ٹیرر کروپس دا ورلڈ فوڈ پروگرام ہز پروائیڈ اسسٹنس ٹو مور دین 275000 پیپل affected by floods in northern Bangladesh using a combination of cash and food to help victims. The floods have severely affected the region as houses are inundated and crops have been damaged. The World Food Programme or WFP has provided assistance to more than 275,000 people affected by floods in northern Bangladesh using a combination of cash and food to urgently meet the basic needs of people whose homes and agricultural lands have been inundated. A WFP member in northern Bangladesh said that mostly 80 to 90% of houses are inundated by the floods and crops have been damaged and agricultural lands are submerged. To mitigate the impact of the severe flooding, the Bangladesh government and the WFP have activated their forecast-based financing project for the first time. Around 5,000 households, which included nearly 25,000 people, received 53 US dollars through mobile money transfers in Kuri Gram district as part of the project. WFP in this area is piloting a project which is called forecast-based financing. Forecast-based financing uh, is a project which allows us to use the uh, flood and weather forecast to trigger the cash transfer to the affected people. Rahon bar tuman amar sar sar yadar katta kadiste. Pai amra khubi khushi hoyisi. Deshya lakar manse khushi hoyisi. Amar aro dukko amio khushi hoyisi. Khubi amar ubugar hoyisi. Cash was distributed to the most vulnerable, including families headed by disabled people, the elderly, and single women. The assistance helped people pay for basic needs such as food and other urgently needed goods and services. According to Bangladesh Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief, 2.3 million people have been affected in 20 of Bangladesh's 64 districts. Meanwhile, Nepal has also been affected by floods caused by monsoon rains. Interior Minister Ram Bahadur Thapa said on Wednesday that the death toll in floods and landslides since last two weeks has risen to 108 in the country. Nepal's House of Representatives on Wednesday unanimously adopted a special resolution condoling the deaths caused by recent floods and landslides in the country. They urged the government to carry out relief, rescue and rehabilitation work effectively.
Nepal's Interior Minister Ram Badur Thapa said that the dead toll in floods and landslides triggered by incessant rain since last two weeks in Nepal has risen to 108, with 33 people still missing and 46 injured in the disaster. He presented details of the government's work, saying helicopters had been kept on standby to carry out relief and rescue operations. At least four people were killed and seven others went missing in flash floods in western Nepal's Lamjong district on Wednesday. The Nepali government has decided not to seek foreign aid and instead directed the local bodies to expedite rescue and relief work. The torrential downpour which has battered Nepal since July 11 has affected around 35 of the 70 districts of the country. Ahead of the 20th anniversary of Vijay Divas, the anniversary of Kargil War on July 26, the Indian Army commemorated the Victory Day with the demonstration of the Beaufort's gun in India's Jammu and Kashmir. The soldiers also recreated some of their daring maneuvers they undertook during the war, like scaling up the hills. India will mark the 20th anniversary of Vijay Divas or Victory Day, the anniversary of Kargil War on July 26. Ahead of the 20th anniversary, Indian Army commemorated Victory Day with a demonstration of the Bafors gun in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The soldiers also recreated some of their daring maneuvers they undertook during the war, like scaling up the hills. The Kargil War that took place in 1999 is one of the most prominent wars between India and its neighbor Pakistan. Soldier trained है और motivated है, लेकिन कुछ special skills जरूरी रहते हैं इस area के लिए, जो कि individual को तैयार करते हैं mentally, physically, psychologically और tactically, और हम उसी चीज की दायरे पे उसकी training individual की training देते हैं. To commemorate India's victory during the Kargil War, weapons used by the Indian Army were also displayed. The display was open to locals to get detailed information about modernized military equipment. The Kargil War took place between May 3 and July 26, 1999 in the Kargil district of Jammu and Kashmir and elsewhere along the Line of Control or LOC. Kargil conflict is also referred as Operation Vijay, which was the name of the Indian operation to clear the Kargil sector. A hundred-year-old church in southern India dedicated to soldiers killed during the World War I marked its centenary celebration on Wednesday. Made in 1918 by the British, the church's rugged brick structure and the teak wood benches are reminiscent of the bygone times. A hundred-year-old church located in India's southern Coimbatore city, dedicated to soldiers killed during the World War I, marked its centenary celebrations. Tucked behind the railway station in the city, the St. Mark's Church on Wednesday saw devotees coming to seek the blessings at the War Memorial Church. The rugged brick structure and the teak wood benches are reminiscent of the bygone times. Apart from the devotees, students and architecture enthusiasts are often seen studying and admiring the construction of the ancient building. We are very glad, we are proud and uh, this year we are celebrating the 100 years centenary celebrations of the church and the government of India, the postal department has come forward to release a stamp, a postal cover in memory of that. Made in 1918 by the British, the church has thatched roofs and was constructed using laterite stones brought from neighboring Kerala province. The tainted glass windows and the terracotta flooring are also evocative of the yesteryear. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.